good afternoon, everybody. So, as I've been introduced, my name is Andrea Castoldi. I've been here in EASA for almost five years, and uh, I hope this presentation will be not too boring as right after lunch. <laughs> So um, what I wanted to give here is uh, an overview of the platform, the idea behind, and uh, what, what is included with our the functionalities and where are we going in the future, which are the training opportunities that we, we provide, and then some little bit of practical informations. And at the end is my idea just to open the tool for those that they didn't see it so far and just to give a quick look and feel of the platform. And then if you have any questions that they can be answered in the allocated time frame, otherwise I will show you that we have a dedicated functional mailbox for all the requests, information and issues reporting. So the first, the idea behind uh, SAPIAC, uh, we wanted to have a centralized platform in order to be able to communicate with, uh, with our applicant for the initial certification projects. Uh, is, uh, has been in, it's been implementing in a, in a step approach. So for the time being, we just manage TCs, STCs, major change projects, TSOs, and also engine related projects. In the future, we will extend it more and more in order to cover all the other aspects. Is it based on SharePoint and is cloud-based? So in this way, it gives the access is granted to everybody. You just need an internet access. You don't need any kind of client to be installed on it. Uh, it works with all the major browsers that we have, uh, that we have tested. And is, the best thing is that it's a platform that is accessible for EASA, so PCM and experts for the NAAs when they are uh, supporting us in the certification activities to third country authorities and to applicants. So everybody can work in a centralized platform without need too much to use emails or other tools. So this is... Um, quite comprehensive slide saying which are the benefit and the drivers that uh, we are using for that. So the first one is the clarity. SharePoint offers some advantages compared to the normal uh, Windows file system that is the versioning. So it's always clear which is the latest version of the document we upload. We have, uh, we have the possibility also to get a concurrent reviewing and editing of document. Of course, this applies just to uh, uh, Microsoft uh, documents with PDF is a little bit more complicated, but it anyway is clear if someone is reviewing because you can check out the documents and so everybody knows that you are working on it. It offers also some flexibility, so you can work online or offline while you are traveling, while you are on your flights, uh, allowing so a better business continuity. The platform is available also 24-7. Uh, it gives some tools also to have a better visibility on the status of the projects. So we will have the progress, we will have who is currently actually to do some actions and who is doing what in the process. It will, uh, in our idea, reduce also quite much the need of the emails because the commenting is already included by the mean of discussions in the platform. And of course, this gives a traceability on all who is doing what, and there is no need many times to dig into long email folders that they will, uh, in order to gather the comments. And also, these are linked to, us, to each specific version of the document itself, so it's easier to retrieve them. Uh, security and confidentiality was one of our first requirement. So the, the platform is uh, uh, on the cloud, is not hosted in, uh, at the ASA premises, but is it uh, anyway by a European provider hosted in Germany, both the main and the disaster recovery uh, server are both here and they are audited by the European Network and Information Security Agency. And they are also like a boundary strict to security and privacy requirements. 
and also we are compliant with this ISO 2701, that is the information management system uh, security um, uh, standard. Uh, quickly through the different uh, reviews. So <clears throat> the tool was launched uh, last year in July, between July and September. Now we rolled out in, uh, in May this year, so a little bit less than a month ago, a version two with a revamped dashboard with some improvement project management tools like a Gantt chart on task allocations. We have uh, included validation projects, the TO, TSO and engine projects templates and some initial concepts uh, to support the CDI LOI. We are working uh, just in these uh, days uh, for the release uh, uh, 2.2 that should be rolled out in uh, next week or maximum the week after. Well, we'll include some generic project and some initial applicant page some initial KPI that will give uh, how the project is moving, and uh, also improve discussion views so that it's easier to retrieve what is open and what is closed. Plus, we are discussing with our provider a uh, version three, that is, the idea is to have it by the end of the year, and the scope will include probably the, the possibility to have workflows integrated, reporting system, and some, again, additional tool to have uh, the discussion more and more efficient. Uh, we try to train uh, as many people as we can on the platform, both internal and uh, external. So for version one, we did an internal C, uh, certification director at training. We did also several sessions with the national authorities and also with the industry. Like today, we give some kind of initial presentation in workshop we can organize a doc training here at TEASA upon request. And we have also some, try to, as much as possible, compatibly with our budget, to organize dedicated training days in industry. So there, was, there has been one in February in UK, and I'm, as far as I'm aware, there will be another one in Toulouse in the mid of July. Uh, the idea for this uh, second version is, uh, apart from dedicated training days, is to update the guidelines material that we have already on the, on the website, and we will see a little bit later on uh, how it looks, uh, and provide uh, some delta training. So if, for those of you that already know the version one, there will be probably some online training to cover the peculiarities of the version two. There will be, as I say, the dedicated training days if possible. And then we continue with our policy that uh, if your company wants to have some dedicated training, just get in contact uh, with us. And uh, we can try to organize uh, in based on the, on the availability of everyone. The practical informations, uh, we have um, uh, basically to re we have created what a functional mailbox called, called CPIAC-help. And to this email, you can send, uh, in coordination with the PCM, the request to have access to the tool, or if you want to have your project managed in the tool. So we will create the users. Uh, first, usually our idea is to create a first user that will be then the admin for the company, and it can uh, include further users from them so that we are not a bottleneck in creating users. So, uh, and with that one, you will receive assess. We will create a, the, the, uh, the project site where, uh, for, uh, for your project. And you can start to work on that in cooperation with the EASA team and the PCM. Plus, the, the CPIAC minus help email is also used uh, if you have any issue, any question, any uh, additional request, so it will be just a centralized uh, way to communicate with the, with the CPIAC team here at EASA. 
the guidelines material and supporting ones will be uh, around the platform and I will show you briefly w where to find it in case you have already assessed. So if we could just uh, open the, the tool, hopefully it didn't get in timeout. Okay, thanks. So just uh, this one the mouse will get there. Okay, okay. Okay. So this is the uh, an idea of the global landing page. That is the one that uh, we see uh, as soon as you log in with your credential. So it's a customized graphical interface, so you don't see too much here about SharePoint, but uh, I wanted just to show briefly. So you will have two tabs, one showing my project and the other one showing all the projects. This applies uh, to EASA, and, but to, for the external ones, usually you will have just a link and you will see just the project that there are under, uh, that they are for, from your company. Uh, not the other one, sorry. You will have a pie chart that will give uh, the um, little bit the statistic of the uh, compliance document status that you provided, what there are accepted, rejected, what they are to be still reviewed by the certification team. But this is just a general overview. And then you will have, uh, as you can see here, uh, the list of projects. So with the project number, and if you click on one of those, uh, you will get inside the project site. Important, uh, you have here a side on the, on the right part of the screen, you will have an area of feedback with this button report an issue that will simply open already an email pre-filled to sepiac minus help and then you can write down which is your request or your issue that you have experienced. On the same here we have some resources that they could um, help yourself. So you will have uh, how to documents. So if you click, you will just open a typical SharePoint page and we have some presentation in PDF that will guide you step by step on the main actions that you have, uh, that you have to do on the platform, like logging in, explaining the dashboard, explaining how to upload and edit documents, how to create comments, how to work offline, how to create tasks, and, and so on. Uh, in the guideline documents, it will be the same, just uh, there are some, let's say, best practices ones. You will have a button to change your password. Those that they have already assessed uh, see that in the beginning you will receive a quite complicated alphanumeric password, so you are willing to change it and you can do it from here. And then you will have here uh, the, on the lower corner uh, a My Task list that basically when someone assign a task to you, you will see it here. So you will know what you have to do. In, uh, and this is quite good when you are uh, assigning uh, documents or assigning comments to be reviewed. So the, the, the project manager from both sides can use this tool to uh, improve the efficiency. At this level, you will see for all the projects, in fact, uh, if you can read it, uh, the last line is the identification of the project in which you have a task. If we enter in a project, now I already pre-open uh, uh, this one, this dummy project uh, for training, you will see that you will have uh, a first line here that are the main buttons where you can enter to the document library, to the discussion library related to documents, to the more general project discussions, that there are the one not linked to a specific documents. And then depending that you are from the other side or from the NAA, you will have your restricted area. It's an area that uh, the other counterpart cannot assess. So, as an applicant, you can upload some draft documents to circulate internally without need to use other, uh, other tools. Then you will have some project information on the right side. So the project title, the number, uh, and who is the PCM, and so on. So pretty generic. And then you will have a 
quite simple but can be quite useful, especially for the smaller project, uh, Gun chart. Uh, this is at the moment is purely manually created, so but you can create in here on manage task. You can start to define uh, some kind of process for your uh, for your documents and for your projects. So deciding when to prepare a document and to upload it, when to has to be reviewed, and so calculating all these kind of um, items. And you can, as you see here, this little orange line. You will have also the uh, the arrow that creates the dependencies. When you create this one and you assign to a person, automatically you will have the, the task created and the person will see it. If we move down, we will have a similar structure as we had, um, as we had before with project. Just here is divided in my projects, my, sorry, my documents and all documents. And uh, he, at the moment, this is uh, my documents. I don't have anything uh, allocated to me. But if we go to all documents, even if this is a, uh, is a dummy project, so don't check too much the numbers and the, and the colors, you will have a, a dashboard that, uh, that will say which is the status of the compliance document, a breakdown panel by panel, so which panel has finished reviewing all the allocated documents, which hasn't started, and which is the process. And then you will have a list of the documents here. This is just uh, in the dashboard. Plus, you will have here a contact uh, list that you can create it. It's manual at the moment. Hopefully, in the future, will be more automatized. And the idea is to have, uh, in the first two uh, big square, the PCM and the project manager from the company side, so the main contacts. And that's why they are not grouped. All the others, they will be uh, appear uh, as a grouped, depending uh, how you create them. And then in here could be the right place uh, sorry, to include, for example, the team person. And this is, uh, to me, useful because you have in, in the same place, you will have all the contacts, email, phone number, and it's quickly just you click on top of uh, on, the, on the links and you will open an email. Or if you have a tool like we have with Jabber, you can directly phone to the person. And um, so this is the the customized part. And then when we get into the documents, this is a purely uh, SharePoint uh, view that you can also customize by yourself depending on the need and your preferences. And here you will have all the document with all the metadata that you can filter and will be the main area where you work. When you select the document in this view, and it's the last important bit, I think, you will appear here a uh, new discussion button. So this will, uh, will be able to create a discussion that is linked to that document. So, and uh, this is the tool that we would use uh, in some, I mean, in some cases uh, to comment the document itself or to give the green light. And uh, so, and this is everything traced attached to the documents. I wouldn't go too much more in details of the technical details of the platform. Uh, I know that this is was quite a, wanted to be just an overview at high level on uh, on what is SAPIAC, where we stand now, and which is the the ideas and the, the next improvement. So, if you have any questions uh, that I can reply now, it's uh, would be good. So perhaps for a change now, since we are good with the time, uh, we could uh, give a microphone to someone having a question in the audience right now. Will someone want to ask a question before we go to the to the one we have received in uh, Slido? Okay. Okay. Javier Espinosa from Airbus Defense and Space. Uh, sometimes some documents could be affected. Some certification documents could be affected by 
restrictions like uh, US export control or military restrictions. Uh, does CEPIAC or will CEPIAC have any provision to manage this kind of documentation or certification documentation in these cases? Uh, well, at the moment, there is not. Uh, the only thing that we are doing in some specific cases is changing manually the, the permission on the, on the document or on the project, depending if it's uh, more sensitive. For the time being, we are more, I have to say we are more focusing on the civil world. But of course, uh, this might get in the future as well, depending also from the number of projects. If this one is the, since APIAC since wants to be the platform used for all the initial certifications projects, this in the future somehow will come. Thank you. Thank you. We had another one here in front. Uh, here. Hello, I'm Thomas Mamanakos from Altron. Um, I didn't get who registered there in their in sepia a single person or a company and my documents is this can uh, yeah is it only for me or no it's a, it's a company based so the company will get the account and then inside the company there will be as many users as you want but there will be no uh, at the moment, there is not any kind of uh, segregation inside the company. So there's one registration with one password for one company? No, no, no. You will get user. Each of them will have a oh. password, but they all will see the same libraries and the same documents because our whole project uh, as from your company. Okay, thank you. Uh, wait a minute, Just because a minute. you need the microphone, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, Just would you say something about um, what happens to the documents when the project is closed? So for the time being in this phase, they are still there. The, the idea for the future is once the project is closed, they will be migrated to our record center or IMF system. So that the project will be, uh, let's say, closed in Sepiak and then exported to the to the other platform. Um, we had a question in Slido about uh, you mentioned the fact that the cloud data is, uh, of course, physically located somewhere in Germany. So can you be more? Uh, are great about that? Uh, I don't know exactly where is the location, so I cannot. <laughs> I know that they are in Germany. The the companies, uh, the the cloud provider is uh, is located here, but uh, I cannot uh, say more on the physical location because I don't know it. <laughs> Uh, can you say a word about the notification uh, feature uh, which is possible to be used uh, in CEPIAC? Yes, well, at the moment we have implemented the standard SharePoint alerting system. So you can put alerts on a, on a library, on a document, or on a, on a full site with the... Uh, with the let's say, with the granularity you want and with the timing you want, if you want to be notified as everything changed on a single document in the single moment that happens, you will receive a lot of emails because every time someone is modifying whichever uh, metadata or data in the project, you will be notified. Otherwise, you will receive uh, weekly or daily summaries that will tell you what is changing in a project. But it's based on the on the out of the box uh, alerting system from uh, from uh, from uh, from SharePoint. So you will you, you have the two options. Uh, you receive an email, and if you want, you can also register your mobile phone, and you will get an SMS. One more question. Just one more. 
Okay, one more question. We are fortunate to have a delegation from uh, the FAA here in house. <laughs> um, what about uh, the FAA, CEPIAC, and uh, the, 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 the particular question was about uh, documents which are actually submitted to US uh, control export. But uh, more generically speaking, I mean, we are talking about a relation with FAA and uh, American uh, stakeholders, I would say, in CEPIAC. Well, at the moment, uh, as, uh, as far as I know, there have been some pilot cases, so we are not really using the tool still for, uh, for the validations. We are still working on because, uh, of course, we need uh, to agree with our colleagues on the FAA, especially from validation to Europe, uh, how the FAA is, is working with their, uh, with their applicant. Because, of course, as soon as they include the documents in a shared area, we have access to that. My understanding is that this has to pass first uh, through the FAA. The tool doesn't support it fully at the moment, even if they have some restricted areas there. But, I mean, there are some pilot projects ongoing, and the idea is to implement it uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much. We have uh, reached the end of this presentation and of the, the question uh, time.